I want to talk to you today about setting up your swarm traps and what you're going to need to set up a good swarm trap. Now what you're going to want is an old deep box. And what I do with my old deep boxes is I take an old inner cover and I just took some finish nails and I nailed this on the bottom to make this the bottom board. Now the contents of the swarm trap. It's very simple. What you're going to want is some old brood gum the dark brood come. Something like this. Now this is still a little sticky. It had some uh, sugar water in it. That's going to draw in some bees. Now they might just come to rob it out, but at the same time it's going to make them aware. We're going to stick these frames in the middle. The dark brood comes. And I use about three of these per trap. And I stick all of them in the center. The reason being I stick them in the center is because up here I have a hole, a one inch hole for the entrance. Now what I like to do in all my deeps when I set them up, it's a new thing I'm starting to get into, is I go ahead and throw a feeder in there. That way when I have to feed, it's taken care of. Now to fill the rest of the box. Now what I'm going to use is uh, these Pergo plastic foundations. It's still got a little bit of wax coating on it. Uh, I have noticed if the wax seems to uh, or need recoated, you could take a paintbrush and put wax back on it. But this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to stick this in here. This one here has got a little bit of drawn comb on it, nothing much. We'll get rid of that. And this is what I'm going to fill the rest of the box with. And you could also, if you don't have foundation, take your wedge and put it at the top to give them a guide. And they'll draw the comb right off of that. Now, if you do use something like this, it's a good idea to put them between something, you know, that's got foundation. That way it gives them guidance to where to go. If you sandwich it between two of these, then there's no way they can cross comb it. So that gives them some guidance. But anyhow, you want to fill the rest of the box with foundation or frames. That way you don't get cross comb in your box. Once, when bees swarm, they pack full of honey. And when they get there, they're ready to, uh, to draw out comb. So leaving them some places to draw out some comb is a, is a good thing. Now I will not fill the feeder up. That's just, that's for after I catch bees with this. I don't have to worry about putting a feeder in it when I go to the bee yard to feed these. I already know, well that hive's got a feeder. I've, I've done taking care of that. Next up is inner cover and a lid. And I don't nail these down anymore. I'm trying something new, which we'll go to next. I made up some new boards. These boards here on the side are 32 inches long and then I drilled a two and a half inch hole up here to hook on a tree limb six to ten foot off the ground. Um, I've screwed this on with some wood screws. Uh, another important thing which I noticed last year is when I took this box down with the little bit of slop in this box the frame still shifted side to side. Uh, while I was taking the box down off the tree. So to stop that this year, what I have done is taken a finish nail, and pushed all the frames to the right, and then I took a finish nail and drove right through here into the wooden frame on both ends. And that'll keep the frames all pushed to one side and keep, keep them tight. So when I take it down out of the tree, now here's how I plan to do it in the tree. You see I've got a piece of wire wrapped around here. I'm going to use that to hold to support the front of the box and to hold my lids down. All right, we'll head up to the woods and uh, get these set. Okay, I'm trying to work without my tripod here, so you'll have to work with me on that. But I have my Queen Lure, homemade Queen Lure, which I have a video on. If you haven't seen it, search it up on my channel. I have cotton balls and essential lemongrass oil. Use, I used to use Q-tips, cotton balls, all the same difference. All 
What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my queen lure, take the lid off, just like that, on the same cotton swab, I'm gonna put two drops of lemongrass oil. There we go. Now it's baited. Now what I'm gonna do is just set it right up. See the entrance is on this side, so I'm gonna set it right up here on this top frame. And it's baited. Now I'm gonna throw the covers on. Last year I uh, I screwed my lids on. This year I'm trying to something a little bit different with this wire, which also supports the front of the box. Okay, now. They usually say, and it's a good rule of thumb to stick by, six to ten foot off the ground with your swarm boxes. I'm sticking this one in the same place I had it last year. Okay, as you can see, I've got it six foot to the bottom, and I, I don't know that that's a bad thing. I did catch a swarm here last year on this same tree, same location. The only difference is, is last year I nailed this box to the tree, had winch straps and everything else around it. I'm trying to figure out a way to hang these without hurting the tree. So all I did was cut off a tree limb, took my hole, hung it on there. This wire is to help hold the lid down in case we get high winds. We're in good shape. So there's my first trap. May 1st, got my first swarm trap hung. There we go. Trap number two set in the same woods, about 50 yards away from the other trap. Now, if you keep up with my blog, any, I did a blog on about about swarm trapping and locations. If you look, I'm right on the edge of a pasture, and we got apple trees lining this whole edge of the woods, and about two miles that way is another beekeeper's bee yard. It might only, it's probably only a mile to cut straight through the field, or as I call it, from a crow's eye. And uh, he's having a hard time keeping up with all of his nukes and stuff. I'm not sure if I caught his swarms last year or what, but it's working for me, so I'm gonna keep at it. And look at the dandelion crop over there. The dandelions blooming the way they are this year, I'm expecting to have a really good swarm season. So, uh, 